In this video, we're going to go over how to navigate the NHD Web Central website builder. We're going to start with all of the elements across the top of the page in the toolbar. Then we're going to talk about the elements on the right hand side of the page. We're going to start up here at the NHG Web Central logo. Next to the logo, we see a desktop view of our website. This is the default view. You can also view your website in tablet and mobile. Typically, you'll be working in and editing in desktop mode and your teacher or judges or anyone who's looking at your website will traditionally look at it in desktop mode as well. Next, we have a save button. So NHD Web Central does not automatically save. So you'll just need to remember to continue to save changes as you make them. Then we have a palette icon. It says edit theme. This is where you go in to edit your page theme. So the colors, the font, everything like that. We'll break that down a little more in a minute. Here is our manage pages. It looks like a file cabinet. So if you click here, it opens all of the pages that you have in your website. These are the ones that I currently have. And if I want to add new pages, I can do so here. Next, I have manage files. This is where all of my images, my PDFs, my video files, any audio files will live. Anything that I want to be showing on my website needs to remain in my file library so that the system knows what to pull to show your viewers. You can double click here to open elements from your computer, or you can drag and drop elements into your file library from your computer. Anything that's been uploaded is in here and you can, you can view it. Next, we have this page option. This shows you all of the pages on your website and help you jump from page to page when you're editing. You can also click open manage pages to see your pages and to create new pages as well. We have this button here, which is the grid line. So it'll show you right now it's on. So it's showing me these lines. If I click it, I don't see the lines unless I hover over them. So that might help you as you start to build and edit your website to see what it will look like for your viewers. Additionally, you can click this preview button to preview changes that you've made on your website. But keep in mind, you have to save before clicking the preview button to see the changes. Here we have a full screen mode. Here we have the ability to view the page code. We have an undo option and we have a redo option. We have a trash can if you want to clear all of the elements on a particular page and start over. We have the option here to import code so you can import HTML and CSS code. No other code will work. So if you're familiar with using HTML CSS code, you can do so here. This question mark is the help button and it will show you information about getting started for the year and then it will give you information on what to do if you run into any questions as you're building your website. Next, we have the palette icon again and the save button again. Depending on the size of your screen, you could see the save and the palette button on both sides or you'll just see them over here. It's okay if you only just see them once. So the palette icon opens up the site theme manager. That's where you can set your font, your page theme, all sorts of fun stuff there. And again, save, that's where you save any changes made to your website. Then we move over here to this paintbrush, gear, lines, and squares. So the paintbrush, if I were to click a button on anything on my page, I would have all of these options that appear here um, under my paintbrush option. So this is some more advanced features, but you can ignore these for now. If you want to get into these details, you can go in and, and take a look. But for the most part, you won't need to get into all of this right away. Then we have the gear button and the line button. These are not relevant, so we don't have to worry about them. The thing we really want is this blocks feature. This is the building blocks of our website. This is what we will take to drag and drop onto our page to build our website. So for example, I can drag and drop a title. I can drag and drop a subtitle, a shorter header, a section header with some text. I can drag and drop just text, primary source quote, secondary source quote, image and source credit, um, 
What else do we have? M embed, an MP3, MP4, PDF file. So all of these elements you're just dragging and dropping onto your page. I'm going to use this trash can button to clean my canvas really quick so we can go through some more. So we have an auto navigation button here. We have navigation buttons, hyperlink text, and custom code. The auto nav will automatically create a navigation bar that, that you can put anywhere on your page. It automatically goes to the top, but you can move it around. But any page that you have built will start to appear in your auto nav bar. So you don't have to worry about linking pages together as long as you have an auto nav bar at the top of each page. It will take care of it for you. So that will help you and your viewers, your judges, easily go from page to page to page on your website. Another thing students do is use these navigation buttons. So I want to create a button that links this page to page one. So this button is automatically linked to page one. I can change the text and I can say next. I could say previous. I could say enter website. So students like to use these um, boxes to put the bottom of their pages to help viewers, judges, whoever's looking at their website go from page to page. You can do this option. You can do the auto nav option as long as your pages are linked together. You can even do both options if you'd like. Then we come down here to hyperlink text. So if you want to create any text on your website that's hyperlinked to another page on your website, you can do that here by dragging and dropping an element in say which page you want to link your text to okay and then you can cop write whatever you want the text to be later or next page so you can build your own internal links you cannot hyperlink to any website outside of nhd web central so all the hyperlinks have to be for pages in your website and then we have custom code elements. So much like this feature up here where we can import our own HTML, CSS code, you can drag and drop in a block to do that as well for a specific element you might want to build on your page. Down here we have structure. So if you want to add horizontal lines to your page, if you want to add spacers between elements, you can do that there. Then if you um, want to see kind of what your page looks like without these little lines. So if I were to add a bunch of spacers like this to kind of go between my elements, but I don't, I don't want to see, that's not what the judges or your viewers are going to see these lines here. So if you just click this button, it will show you what your page actually looks like. So you can see that horizontal line I added, but those three boxes that I added as spacers as a viewer, I don't see them. It's just in this editor mode that I see them. Then we come down here to easy layout. So this is how you can lay out elements of your page. Instead of just dragging and dropping them randomly onto the page, you have a number of options. So Flexbox will give you two columns here that you can be flexible with. Um, so I could add text into one and I could add an image and source credit into the other. So this just helps you format your page. So there's a variety of different options. The flexible one allows you to change, like I want a little bit of text, but I want a big image, or I want lots of text and a small image. So you can play around and be flexible with that option. There are more standard options where there's two columns, but you can't change how large they are. This is just the size they are. Um, you can do three columns, you can do four columns, but you cannot edit the size of these like you can with the flex boxes. So it's just up to you what you'd like to do. Um, then you can see that there's also a three, four, three. So that means a, a smaller, a larger, and a smaller. Um, three, seven is a small and then a large, and a seven, three is a large and a small. So you can play around with this kind of see what you'd like. And with any of these options, you can just plop an element right in there like this and play around with the sizing. It's up to you how you'd like to format your page, but there are lots of different formatting options where you can drag and drop these elements up here into them. So play around with it, see what you like, see what works best with the elements that you're adding to your page. And then down at the bottom, we have one last element that is new for this year. First, I'm going to clear my page. 
then I'm going to drag and drop in an image carousel. The image carousel will show you all of the images that are currently in your file library that you can add to the image carousel, or you can double click here to upload files from your computer. You'll pick an image from your image carousel one at a time, um, or you'll pick an image from your file library one at a time to add to your image carousel. Um, it will automatically have you do two, but you can continue to add additional images once you add one. I haven't added any yet, but I'm going to show you. Once you click on the outside of the carousel box, you can click this plus button, and that will change it from two slides to three to four to five to six, however many images you want to add to your carousel. You just click the outside of your carousel so that it highlights the box in blue, which will bring up this menu where you can continue to add slides. So that feature is newer this year. We originally had an image carousel a few years ago, and this is the new and improved version of that element. So those are all of our building blocks on the side and all of our options up across the top in our toolbar.